Hey guys, so a lot of you guys always ask me questions related to like, you know, quantitatively, what are you doing in terms of um, tracking your progress? You know, are you trying to gain one to two pounds per week? Because a lot of people would try to lose one to two pounds per week when they were, um, when they were cutting. So now that I'm lean bulking, is that what I'm trying to do? Are you trying to gain three to four pounds, you know, per month? Do you have like, are you trying to get up to 205? Are you trying to get up to 230, 195? What are you trying to do? And the thing is, that's not the right question because that just looks, you know, at your body fat or sorry, your body weight from a very simplistic standpoint, but you can't really do that. With cutting, yeah, it's pretty simple. You know, one to two pounds per week or 0.5 to 1% of your current body weight um, lost every week. Yeah, it's not, you know, it's not a very complicated process. However, when it comes to lean bulking, there's a lot of things um, that I look for. Number one is simply strength. I look for strength. Pro strength is probably my most important um, performance indicator because chances are if you're stronger, you are probably um, bigger. If you have gained 20 pounds and none of your lifts have gone up, you got a problem. However, after that, I also look at total body composition, which means I look at a combination of did your weight increase? And if it did, um, what percentage or what ratio of that increase was from body fat? Or what ratio was, you know, uh, from actual lean muscle mass? If I put on 20 pounds and 10 pounds of that I know it to be muscle. That is awesome. That's like a one to one ratio of fat to muscle. I'm okay with that. However, if I put on, you know, 20 pounds of total weight and only five pounds of that one was what was muscle, then in that case, it's not that great because it's like a one to, it's a one to three ratio. You know, only 25% of the actual weight gain was muscle mass and I'm not that happy. Now, the thing is, okay, fine, we get it. But how do you track it? How do you know any of this stuff? You know, you can say all these numbers, but you know, and you can kind of estimate it visually. You look at yourself in the mirror, you're like, yeah, body fat percent, but how can you possibly get it down? Now, I've always loved the idea of, you know, body fat percentage. I always talk about it in my videos. I've talked about it excessively in my, you know, the whole natural or not thing debate. And I'm always doing visual estimates because up until now, I think of that's the only way we, we can. There are machines out there, for example, like the DEXA scan, the BOD pod, which are very accurate, but they're clinical grade. Those machines cost like tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars and you can only get access to them if you're in a medical setting, if you're at a hospital, uh, a medical clinic, um, or you're a professional athlete, you're doing some kind of testing. For the common man, the common individual, we usually don't have access to that. There are a lot of scales which do um, electrical impedance uh, technology, which is pretty much when you stand on the scale, it sends an electrical current through your body, and then depending on the resistance that your body um, you know, acts upon the electrical current because different substances have different electrical current resistance. Fat will um, resist an electrical current differently than water, than bone, than muscle mass. Then your body, um, you know, the, the scale can kind of like calculate all these things. I've never liked those things because they've always been wildly inaccurate. I actually have had one and I remember I stepped on the scale at pretty much the same conditioning level that I am now, which you guys will see later in the video. And, the moral of the story is I'm not that fat, don't get me wrong. But the scale told me I was like 23% body fat and I was like, okay, no, 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 no. You know, I did not trust it whatsoever. So I've kind of like, I almost wrote off the technology thinking that it's inaccurate. It's like, you know, anything that you can buy, you know, from Walmart probably isn't as, you know, anywhere near as accurate as something that you would use in a hospital grade. But I actually been seeing a lot of YouTubers, you know, fitness YouTubers um, talking about this and I just had to jump on the bandwagon and I picked the, I got one of these. This is a body analyzer. It's kind of like a super, it's like a scale on steroids because in addition to calculating your weight, it also calculates um, and estimates your um, body fat percentage, your muscle mass percentage, your actual bone weight. It calculates like a whole plethora of things. Now I got it and to be honest, I was a little bit skeptical because again, the technology isn't super advanced and I always see crazy numbers, right? I've tried this before, you know, in the gym, they would have something, you know, like a big electrical thing and it would tell me I'm like either, I remember this one time it told me I was 6% body fat, which isn't the case. And then like a month later, I don't think my body changed that much. It told me I was like 25% body fat. So I'm like, I completely wrote off the technology, but this one actually really pleasantly surprised me. And I wouldn't be talking to you you guys about this if I wasn't pleasantly surprised. I stood on top of it and today it told me I was 191.6 pounds and 15.2% body fat. And to be honest guys, from a visual standpoint, I think that is really, really accurate. And I was extremely surprised. I actually think that, you know, it's as accurate or, you know, very, very close to if I were to do a very high level expensive, you know, bod pod or DEXA scan, like one of those crazy, like, or like the water submersion tests, like those tests that cost like, you know, thousands of dollars for the actual equipment. 
So I was actually really happy about that. And actually, this is what I'm going to be using now for the future. I'm gonna be tracking my weight and I'm also gonna be tracking changes in my body fat percentage uh, throughout my lean bulk. Pretty much, so if I get up to 200 pounds, that's great. But did I get up to it and I'm 20% body fat, in which case, you know, I'm doing it too fast, I gain weight too much, I gotta slow down, I gotta decrease my caloric, in, uh, my caloric intake, my caloric surplus shouldn't be as high, maybe instead of being 500, it should be 300, I should slow down. But, you know, on the other hand, if I get up to 200 pounds and it's like, you know, 16% body fat, I'm ecstatic about that, that is awesome, that's pretty much saying I'm as big as I was last year, but leaner, which means the actual muscle mass is more. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy about that. And I just thought I would talk to you guys about that. The actual company that sent me this, they are doing some kind of like sale discount code thing. So if you guys are interested, uh, you can get 60% off using the link down in the description below. I know I was actually like pretty damn pleasantly surprised, you know, with the, with the degree of accuracy, at least, you know, conjunction to what I thought I looked like from a visual standpoint. So I am going to be using this in the future. But you know what, guys, I could talk about my physique all day in terms of the numbers and the mumbo jumbo and the quantitative stuff, but what better way to do a physique update than to actually show you guys. Hey guys, back with the commentary today for a hypertrophy um, back workout. So I really want to use this footage because I think it's a great um, indication of my current physique, both in terms of uh, muscle mass, in terms of body fat percentage, um, and also in terms of strength. For example, in this case, doing weighted pull-ups. This is my main compound, uh, my main progressive overload focus exercise for my hypertrophy based back days, obviously because I'm not doing deadlifts. What I'm doing is weighted pull-ups. This is, I believe, 30 pounds, and I'm doing this for four sets of 10. I started off doing body weights, you know, the week after my uh, my competition back in August, and I've been progressively adding five pounds every time I'm able to successfully do four sets of 10. If I do like 10, 10, 10, 9, too bad, next week, do it again. But if I do, you know, really push myself, if I get that four sets of 10, congratulations, I upgrade to the next weight. And I've been doing this ever since, you know, from zero all the way up to 30 pounds. And it's been, uh, it's been, you know, working pretty well for me, at least the way uh, that I feel it, how it activates my, uh, my back. And yeah, yeah, Arnold's got nothing on me. But um, yeah, so the reason I do two back workouts, and I've talked about this in the past, but I just want to reiterate quickly, is because I love deadlifts. They are awesome. You know, they're nothing, nothing gives you a rush, like lifting that much weight off the ground. But when I'm done after doing my, I do currently four sets of four at a very high percentage of my current estimated one rep max, probably around 88 to 92, 90-ish percent of my estimated one rep max. So that's a lot of weights currently for me. I'm done, like I am dead. I may do a couple sets of seated cable rows. I may do some lap pull downs, maybe a few bicep curls, but um, I don't do too much volume because it's so much uh, intensity. Now I do back day every about four to five days. It works out to about two workouts every 10 days, which means I'm deadlifting about you know heavy about once every 10 days. And I feel that that is sufficient for me at this at this point in time, I may increase it in the future once I'm a little bit closer to my, uh, you know, standard weights. Again, me being about 190, 191, it, you know, somewhere around there currently. Um, I'm usually like at my strongest, somewhere in the mid to high 190s. So perhaps I'll, you know, change strategy in the future. But I wanted to include all this footage because this is a great indication of pretty much, you know, potential, you know, pretty much where I may be, you know, at my biggest ever when you factor in both body fat percentage and muscle mass. Last year I got up to like 205, 210, but you know, it was pretty damn, it was pretty damn fat. And obviously I looked a lot better when I was competing. I was like 170, 172. I was just shredded, peeled to the bone, or, you know, at least as lean as I've ever been. 
Um, but the muscle mass was simply not there. You lose some muscle mass when you are cutting as a natural. It's inevitable. You just have to you know, get over it, get used to it. But right now, is this? it's the best combination. I love being at this body fat percentage. This is where I'd like to stay at year round, which is why I don't want to go over. And if I do, I'll you know, jump into a little bit of a mini cut. But somewhere in that 14 to 16% body fat, that mid uh, that mid teens level of body fat percentage is my favorite it's my favorite in terms of performance it's my favorite in terms of a combination of um body mass in terms of size and conditioning a lot of people have messaged me in the past they're like you know what's the magic body fat percentage number to remain at all year round not like shredded not like you know full-out bear mode but what's just a good level and number one there is no answer every individual is different some people really want to just get as big as possible as fast as possible some people want to stay completely lean they want to stay like 10 or 11 percent body fat which is actually going to allude to something I'm going to talk about in two minutes later in this video. But in the meantime, this is probably my favorite. I'd like to stay around this, you know, body fat percentage and this size for the time being. It's good. I just feel strong. I feel healthy. I'm not fat by any means. Um, You know, I'm not like shredded anymore. I do have some vascularity still. Um, The abs are still kind of there in the right light, which I apologize for in this case because it's extremely high exposure. But yeah, guys, in terms of overall body fat percentage, muscle mass, strength, everything, this is probably... The best physique, the best lean bulked physique I have ever had, which I'm pretty happy with. Okay, guys, I wanted to explain the different kind of bulking options we all have. And to do this, what better way than a graph? Because we all know how much you guys love those. Anyway, so we got two variables we got change in weight and change in time pretty much like as time goes on you know what's going to happen to your body so in my opinion there are three kinds or three options when you are bulking the first option has a very slow increase in weight as you can tell this is not a lot of weight but the thing is there's very little fat gain this is what's referred to as a super clean uh, bulk. This is where the individual literally goes from competition ready, you know, at 8% body fat to like maybe 10 or 11% body fat. Essentially, the guy looks like he's ready to step on stage, you know, within three to three to four weeks all year round. You know, very lean, not a crazy amount of mass gain, but you know, whatever you want to do. Next option we have is the dirty bulk. As you can tell, a lot more is going on. A lot faster by the way each one of these pretty much represents like a year so this is a very long term you know process that we are talking about like this would be like you know a cutting season uh this would be a bulking season cutting season bulking season and pretty much this process repeats you know for years or decades if the person you know wants to do so so is the mass you know increasing of course and is the mass increasing you know at the end of you know everything that you've been doing in every year is it increasing significantly more than you know if you were to do a significant you know really really clean bulk yes of course but then you have like these like these you know these peaks and then these troughs and it, it's, this process keeps on going because you keep on like maxing out and then cutting down and then maxing out and then cutting down and in terms of, so like this would be like your fat mass like pretty much like this is like me at like 210 pounds and then this is me at my lean mass so pretty much you know on competition day so maybe when i competed at like 169 then 172 then 175 so event you know slowly like you know you are gaining lean muscle mass but it's kind of an annoying process because you keep on having to do this you know this back and forth so you're only really bulking like here so like these you know this section right here is like a bulk and then this section right here is a cut and you keep on repeating this process forever. Now, option number three, which is what I'm doing right now, which is what I advocate many people to do is a lean bulk. So in the case of the lean bulk, are you, you know, ever going to be necessarily as high in terms of overall, you know, muscle mass in terms of overall, you know, body size as you were on a regular bulk? No, absolutely not. You know, there's a big difference between you two. But because your cuts are so small, see these like little, you know, mini cuts, you're never going to get to such a crazy amount of body fat percentage. For example, you know, if this is like, let's say 10% BF, and this is like 25% BF, like this is a big, dude, this is a dirty bulk. This would be something like 15% uh, body fat, which is a lot more manageable. I mean, this is ready to go on stage within about three, three to four months. 
as opposed to in this case where it's like, you know, one month and here where it's like a six plus month competition prep. And this is very difficult on you. It's very taxing on you uh, in terms of your hormone level, in terms of your muscle mass uh, loss, in terms of your psych you know, psychological well-being, mental well-being, everything. Overall, this, this, this sucks. This is a little bit too strict in my opinion. And especially for a natural athlete, it's very unrealistic. It's very difficult. And pretty much like you'll never really feel what it's like to grow. You'll never feel it. You know, it's very difficult to put on uh, body mass in my opinion or strength on this. So not the best option. This is why I like, you know, the lean bulking option. And the thing is in the end, yeah, you're never, you know, as massive as you could be. But when you actually factor in, um, you know, if you were lean bulking, what you cut down to versus where you are in terms of a lean bulk, you're pretty much the same thing, right? So all you're doing is you're not having such crazy highs, but you don't have to like spend all this time getting down to such crazy lows because your cuts are so small and so short. You just do these little mini cuts. So that is, you know, guys, this is just a little kind of cluster, <laughs> cluster of information, but I wanted to explain that you have essentially three options when it comes to the super clean bulk, the dirty bulk, and the regular kind of lean bulk where you never really get above 15 to 16% body fat and you can always do a mini cut to get down to 12 to 13% body fat and you're essentially ready to step on stage, ready to shed down to like 8% body fat within two, two to three months at any point in time. Either way guys, thank you so much for watching. Appreciate each and every one of you and I'll see you guys in the next awesome educational, hopefully educational video.